Well, I wanted to put out a couple tidbits. I actually put this out on another video. Uh, which is better, the AK-47 round or the 5.56 NATO round? And, well, it, you can actually get into a lot of different things because the ammunition itself, it's not the whole diameter of the bullet and is not the whole deal. That's quite obvious. There's a lot of different types of ammunition out there. But first, I just want to state that, you know, the round that we were using, the type of weapons we are using today really would have been what was back in the day, um, the lever action in the six-shooter. Uh, that was the most technologically evolved. Actually, I kind of like these uh, weapons, even though they're very nostalgic today, but at the time, they were the most cutting edge. So a lot of times, people are a little, have a little squeamish about, you know, we're, we're talking about weapons here and stuff. Oh, we shouldn't be talking about... I know some liberal people are liberal. I don't know if they're liberal. They're communist. But anyway, um, I want to put out something now. First, I want to give you a little thought, give your thought processes about something else here, too. Say you got a spear. It's got 50 foot-pounds of energy, right? Because everybody looks at, the, at the, the statistics and they say, this round has more energy, right? Uh, there's a lot of other stuff going on, but just to give you an example, you can't really look at the energy. as Because, okay, say this spear has 50 foot-pounds of energy. Say this football filled up with beans has 50 foot-pounds of energy. What is going to do more damage to you if it comes at you, right? The football or the spear, right? If they got equal amounts of energy... I mean, it's a stupid example in a way, but it kind of makes you think about what the hell is energy. You know, some people argue like, eh, it's physical. Oh, it's, eh. Well, anyway, uh, on the left here, you got, I'm, I'm going to ignore this round. It's 7.62 by 51 NATO. And you got the 5.56 five, by 45 millimeter NATO, right? And you got the 5.45 by 39 Russian and the 7.62 by 39 um uh, AK-47, right? Now, it's interesting. Now, this 545-39, that's a nasty little round, tell you the truth. Um, <laughs> the Russians do not, you know, today pretty much everybody's using this smaller caliber ammunition. But, but, but be quite honest, and I guess maybe this is my opinion, so probably the ideal diameter bullet should be somewhere between 6.5 three millimeters and seven millimeters due to the best flight characteristics but for this we're going to talk I'm going to give you a couple other things on this just to you know like I'm going to throw up a chart here I didn't really go to town on this video but I want to tell you a couple things probably people don't know because I mean I'm looking at these videos on I was looking around on YouTube and I was like I'm looking at these videos like people blowing up a cinder block and you know and there's all kinds of videos out there shooting up water jugs and it's like yeah this one's more powerful look at it day it went through more water jugs and yeah I guess that has something to do with it too but um, for instance um, you got the energy you got the, the 556 or 223 Remington civilian round I'm not even showing all the types of rounds you can have a 62 grain you can have a 68 grain and all that but so you got a thousand um, foot pounds, of, you know, energy, right? And you're looking at the um, the 7.62 by 39, the AK round over here on the right. It's got more energy, so you're thinking, wow, it's more powerful, right? Well, the reality situation is that's not. It's it's almost like the thing with the spear. It's it's a piss poor example, I guess, as far as an ex analogy is. But you could tell it, t it tells you that energy isn't telling you the whole deal. Um, there's actually a couple things going on here. Actually, in World War One, they found out that rounds were going over 2,000 feet per second caused more cellular damage. They caused the cells in the human body to explode, right? So they, so they used to think, they were thinking the enemy was using poison bullets. When they first saw this, they were saying, whoa, they must be using poison bullets. Now, it turned out that the velocity of the bullet itself was causing more cellular damage around the obvious wound because this, you, the cells in the body would explode like little balloons. So even though 
you might have like a 4570 government might have around the same energy or as a 30 odd six Springfield 30 odd Springfield looking really puny compared to the 4570 government uh, you know 4570 government making a much bigger hole much bigger freaking uh, weight bullet the 30 odd six Springfield the puny Springfield made a lot more damage due to velocity now there's another thing that entered into the picture besides the it's a rough it's a rough thing with the 2,000 feet per second I mean it's not like exactly 2,000 feet per second but that's roughly about a cutoff where you get a lot more um, damage on tissue beyond the obvious damage like if you're looking at ballistic gel you see ballistic gel makes this does this and does that well there's more going on there when it gets over 2,000 feet per second it actually causes that the ballistic gel can't duplicate that because undamaged tissue around the area is actually dead because over 2,000 feet per second makes the cells explode like tiny little balloons I don't, I don't know if anybody's even saying this stuff but I, I noticed from other things I work with and uh, you know I'm not gonna get into some kind of crazy arguments or anybody or anything but I'm telling you the truth here it really is that's and um, when they first were seeing the wounds that um, were made in Vietnam like in the early 60s when they had the uh, the M16 A1 and used on enemy their doctors are examining the wounds are saying oh my god what the heck's going on there was more going on besides the 2,000 feet per second there's another parameter of around roughly 2,600 feet per second now this chart is coming of screwed up here because this says 29.85 for the 55 grain full metal jacket down here I'm looking at it it should be around 3200 and the 20 I don't know what I don't maybe this is like off a different barrel or something because that's you know that's that's there's so many different factors you can come into play but actually the a2 round is around 3,000 feet per second roughly standard standard you know not the carbine barrel I'm talking about like an A2 right not an A4 um, the A1 round with 55 grain full metal jacket was around 3200 feet per second that round when it, when it goes over 2700 feet per second not only does it make the thing where the cells explode and tissue right it also it also causes the round to fragment that's another thing and the fragments cause a lot of different wound channels going like really fast it cause the two it makes really the a1 is actually at real close distances is probably more lethal than the a2 now here's something else to consider yeah you know, you know just, now I'm also showing a chart with a 300 blackout actually I think that's a really good one too probably in lighter round bullets in the lighter bullet stuff but um, something else that's going on here too um, probably this is not showing a good example here but so I think the um, 556 and like the 68 grain um, it might show like out to like four or five hundred yards I'm pretty sure it is yeah it's it's a little higher energy than the and I don't have the chart here it's a little higher energy than the 7.62 by 39 millimeter and then somebody will think well that's got more energy well actually that's where you got to kind of I can't say that energy doesn't mean anything but when you have a bigger round it makes a bigger hole and you're talking about and it's got a bigger weight and, and it's full metal jacket it's not expanding and it's not going fast enough to expand it's not going fast enough to splinter bigger hole uh, and more weight on a bullet means more damage you could have less energy but that doesn't mean nothing on you know a soft target okay I mean I guess I said something there that maybe somebody will argue with that line but when you're saying because what happens is when a 20 when a 556 five, gets out there to long distance it's basically like a 22 long rifle practically you know and once it gets below 
the 20 the 2600 feet per second it's it, it works great up to that now the a1 was holding 2600 feet per second actually a little further out than the a2 but you know, it's it's more like the A2 is a little stronger further out overall, overall. But like when you're talking short distances, for that short distance, or you're talking relatively short distance, A1 actually holds that 2,600 feet per second, uh, 2,600 feet per second out a little further on the short distances. When you get really far out, when you get further out, the A2 is actually more, is, as, as the round is better than the A1. And the other thing is, there's also stuff where the round has to be, I know with the uh, A1, it used to be uh, 1 and 12 inch, uh, one, 1 twisted every 12 inches. The round wasn't that stabilized. Sometimes the round would go into an object sideways. Which is not good if you're trying to break through freaking a tree or a brick or something like that. But if it goes through soft tissue sideways, it's going to, or goes in there crooked, it's going to come out at a crazy angle. That's why usually, the, that's why that round is, that's why a lot of people have been copying that round. It's like ballistics, the ballistics charts don't tell you a lot of stuff that really happens. And actually, a lot of this—I don't even know what the hell, how, where, how, where this information is on the internet. I know it was classified for like freaking decades um, about what I'm actually telling you. I know it's not classified anymore. <laughs> so I mean, so I mean, you know, when you're looking at these charts. These charts don't tell you everything. They don't tell you everything. It's like, yeah, it's physics. It's mathematics. I mean, I could talk mathematics, too. I mean, I was a math major, for crying out loud, before I switched to accounting. I used to belong to the math club. I don't want you know, I don't want to... And you know what? All this stuff doesn't mean a damn thing if you don't hit what the hell you're aiming at. And if you really want to argue about things, if you got, if you're sitting on a KD course, a known distance course, oh, great, you know, that's one thing. And then there's people... You know, you got various shooting positions, and you can play that game, which, which is good. It's good. But then... If you're running with gear, and you know you got to use cover and concealment, and haste, you know fire, fire on the run. There's a lot of other stuff going on. That's not the KD course. I mean, there's a lot of and the thing is, if you don't hit something, it don't matter what all this stuff says, right? But you know, if you just for the sake of argument, no, I don't want to get an argument though. It's like when you're looking at these charts. They don't tell you what's really going on as far as, you know, it's, we'll, we'll call it soft targets, okay? They don't tell you what's going on with that. Because i got to be politically correct about i got to be nice about all this because when YouTube will say, hey, you, you can't talk about this, it's bad. <laughs> you know? But you know what I mean, right? i got to tell you that and that's really how it is. It's like something can have less energy even. And if you're getting down in like the lower pistol velocities if it makes a bigger hole and a bullet's got more weight and you know you're talking like full metal jacket it, it's just got a bigger hole and bullet's got more weight it's going to do more damage but if you're talking about you know 2,000 feet and above it causes the cells to like actually blow up like air balloons or I guess water balloons or whatever, there should be water balloons, and the, the cells in the body to blow up like water balloons, past what you see obvious damage. So like ballistic gel doesn't tell you everything. And then if you're shooting, if it's going over 2,600 feet for a second, you're getting a lot of fragmentation. So you got like, you know, several wound channels. Then if the round is destabilized, it can go in there backwards, for crying out loud. You know, it could go with the, with the big side in, you know. That's why, that, that's why that 16 is really freaking... That's why the Russians freaking adopted something like it. And the Chinese adopted something else that's sort of like this, too, like the little one. Um, for sake of argument, though, I'll, give, I'll tell you this. I wish they... I, you know... <laughs> Somebody had a dead set. They wanted to make a 30 caliber, so they made a 300 Blackhawk. They should have really made like a, 
a six six point three millimeter to seven millimeter black hawk. That would have been ideal, but um and anybody that's actually into this stuff, you know, I I this this black black hawk black hawk but I'm thinking of Ruger <laughs> black out. You know, I'm doing this right off the top of my head, man. I'm thinking about a few things here, but I'm just I'm telling the truth on this. I don't want to really put a lot of stuff into this video, but I did tell you a couple of things here that a lot of people don't realize. When you get down, you know, you almost got to look at it like this: the bean bag and the spear. You know, you know, it, it's like what is it actually doing on a soft target? And you know, that's that's and that's one area. And then there's other things where you're talking about bullet drift. You're talking about um, it, will it deflect on a tree branch? You know, that was one of the problems with the A1. It freaking hits a twig. It goes, bing, goes the other way around, right? Probably come right back at you. No, I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean, right? Right? So it, it's like, um, you know, these charts don't mean anything. They don't really tell you, like, that much as to really what happens in the real world and that's why a lot of and you know there's a lot of debate about this garbage too I could tell you that right now but um, a lot of people look at that A1 or the A2 rounds or whatever and they say oh they're so puny you know like you don't you don't quite get what's going on with those things man um, they're looking at these charts and that's that's really what's wrong with it and I got to say again, two, over 2,000 feet per second, they found this out in World War I, actually. It causes um, cells to blow up or be disrupted or shocked. Maybe it won't be, they'll be dead. The cells will be dead. They'll look like they're alive. But later on, it'll look like they're, you'll see they're obviously this dead cellular tissue. And that's how they used to think, well, the enemy was using, they said they thought they were using poison bullets. No, they weren't. They weren't. They weren't. It was the velocity was doing that, and that's 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 not in these charts, though. I mean, it's like they're telling you what the velocity is, but see down here, it's telling you. And you see this chart. I don't know what the hell this chart. This chart might be in a short barrel or something. I don't know where the hell I got this chart from. It's just some standard bullshit chart. But I can tell you that this 55 grain full metal jacket. In the A1, it's really around 3,200 feet. Um, in the A2, it's just about a 62 or 68 grain, depending on what ammo you're using. Then it's just below 3,000 feet per second. But when you're going over 2,600 feet per second, that's another parameter with around splinters. And then there's the stabilization of the round, too. The, the, the M16 round is it's got like a slight wobble sometimes it's over well depends if you're using depends on what barrel you're using for what weight of ammunition like if you're using really relatively like a 68 grain round you use like a one uh, uh, one twist and seven and a half inches on the barrel to stabilize the round if you use the 55 grain round in that one twist and seven and a half inches or seven inches that that round would be overstabilized, but then again, it would have much better penetration on steel. But you know, this stuff is kind of like it really. It's like arguing about golf or some crap. You know, that's what I, like, it gets to be stupid. But I do want I did want to bring up a couple points. And I guess the two points I brought up is, you know, actually a few points actually about the two thousand feet per second causing cells to blow up like water balloons you won't see that like water or something I mean you'll see there'll be dead tissue beyond what is actually visible and what would be visible in ballistic gel and then to 2600 feet per second and above you have fractured round the rounds will fracture then of course you know there's a stabilization and um, there's a lot of things like the flight characteristics and all that but um, the AK round you know, 7.62 by 39. Like the countries that still use it today are like um, Iran, uh, North Korea, I think Finland and Cuba. Pretty much nobody's using it. 
I mean, they are. Some people are using it. They use it for like the reservist troops, you know, like the civilian reserve and all that kind of garbage. But the main army doesn't use that. Pretty much, it's not being used by most of the militaries. Went to like something smaller, like around like what the NATO stuff is. And um, I know if you get into another argument about this with the blackout, the blackout is actually superior to the AK round. It's that's it's more aerodynamic and all this garbage. Um, that's another factor too. So, anyway, just forgot to put this out for your common knowledge because um, I don't know what people are trying to. <laughs> I got some I got some knowledge in this area, but I, to me, it doesn't really mean a damn thing because, you know, the most important part of the whole equation is. You gotta hit the target, and uh, you know, resting your rifle on a bipod on a beanbag or some shit like that at the range isn't really gonna. I mean, in, in saying you, you got a one-inch group at 200 yards or something, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's all I gotta say about this stuff. But uh, just want to give you a little common sense. <laughs>